What's up guys, Zach from Mark Customs, and today I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild the Model 94 carburetor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the base. Um, I'm gonna use some new, some original parts. Um, it's always really good to make sure that everything uh, is actually still usable before you move ahead. So if you want some of that type of information, um, go to my first video where I take this apart, investigate the carburetor uh, to show you what to look for. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a throttle shaft. Um, it goes in over here with this little uh, notches. And I'm a little overkill. I put a tiny bit of wheel bearing grease just on the very edges, really, really small amount. Um, go ahead and slide this in here. It should spin freely, but really, really importantly, make sure there's no play up and down on either side of the shaft. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and put my throttle plates in. Um, these only go in one way. I mean, I'm sure you could probably force them in the wrong way. Okay, so the throttle plates, they have these little detents right here that keeps you from putting it in too far. Um, they need to go in from the top, so make sure you orientate your base so you're not putting them in through the bottom. These little notches right here, make sure they're actually facing your idle screws right here. So go ahead and slide these down in from the top and try to move your shaft back and forth. So the little holes here uh, line up with the screws. So I'll slide that in, move my shaft to where I can see it. So I move it around, make sure it moves freely, make sure nothing's binding. And the screws are actually gonna get screwed in from the bottom. So that's where you should see the little recesses right here in the throttle shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both throttle plates in here, make sure everything moves freely before I put the screws in. So slide it down in there. Make sure it actually lines up with everything. Make sure you have your shaft in and out just right so everything lines up and you wanna make sure it fully closes. That's what I like to make sure for before I actually put the screws in. Now back in the olden days, when they put the screws in, they would screw it in, get a stake punch, stake it on both sides so the screw doesn't come out. More modern times, I like to use Loctite. Now, this Loctite, once you put it on, if you try to unscrew it after it dries, you're gonna break the screws off in the shaft. Now you could drill it out and retap it, but a little bit of heat to get out this red Loctite. Uh, too much heat will obviously melt the brass. Okay, so now this depends on your application, but obviously I'm not running an extended shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the original linkage back on. Um, I just painted it to make it look nice. Should just press on through the notch, spin and lock in on the outside of the other notch. So it sticks right in place. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my idle screws. Put my spring in. Get it started. my spring on and get the next one started. Okay, so now we're gonna spin them all the way down until they touch. That one's all the way down touching. Now I'm just gonna use a screwdriver just so I can count the turns. I'm gonna turn it off one and a half times. So one full turn, that's one full turn, then a half a turn. There's a half. Okay, make sure it's touching. Screw it all the way down to it touches. One full turn and a half a turn. Now we're done with the base. So we can set that to the side. Next, we're gonna move on the body of the carburetor. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and install my jets. Pretty simple, just line them up, screw them in, make sure they're snug. They don't have to be super tight, um, just a little snug.
All right, so now I'm gonna put my jet well plugs on. Make sure you put your little washers on these. Um, just make sure they seal up, they don't leak. I'm just reusing the originals. Just clean them up a little bit, make them look a little bit nicer. And uh, don't, don't forget while you're torquing everything down, this is aluminum. Really easy to strip it out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the clusters in. What I've gone ahead and already done was put my little seals inside the body here where the clusters are gonna sit. Then make sure you take the cluster cap off here because you're gonna be replacing the little seal that goes in here. So what I did was put brake clean in there and blew it out multiple times, multiple, multiple times and made sure that I have air coming out uh, every single hole right here so nothing's plugged up. So go ahead and put your new seals on. And screw the cap back on. It should just go down snug. New seal. Screw the cap back on. Okay, now that I got my gaskets in, I'm gonna go ahead and put my clusters in. Uh, make sure the needle goes on the front side there. And make sure it sits nice and flush and flat. Just get both clusters in. Move it around, make sure it sits all the way down flat. Now, don't forget to put in your little check valve for your accelerator pump. Uh, make sure there's no edges on this check valve. If, it, if there's any edges, uh, it's not going to work at all. Needle goes down first. So put it down in needle first. Make sure you got a nice fresh gasket on your squirter. The squirter faces towards Venturi's. So I'm gonna set that in there. I'll show you what it looks like. Squirter faces towards the Venturi's. Now we have long screws and we have short screws. Now on the 94 models, there's a bunch of different types here. Um, for my particular type that I have, it's gonna be a short bridge and a long bridge. Uh, the long bridge has longer screws and the short bridge has shorter screws. Go ahead and put the long bridge on the top and snug that down. Just line the screws up, get them started, and snug it down. Uh, there should be no up and down play on your squirter at all. It should be smashed down. So just double check. No play, it's good to go. Put the small bridge towards the rear of the car body. All right, so next I'm gonna put the accelerator pump together. Um, this is a nice like silicone based uh, accelerator pump. The old leather ones cannot stand up to the ethanol and all the different stuff in the fuel nowadays. So uh, it's a nice upgrade. Go ahead and put the spring on the rod here. And this little clip, the notches go up. So make sure you hold it with the notches up, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and compress it down so that clip actually goes through the rod here. When it goes down far enough, the pump rod will clip on just like that. So it should be able to compress up and down. Okay, now we're gonna slide this into the housing and make sure it's free moving. Go up and down nice and easy. I polish this rod right here so it moves up and down on the housing really well. Now here's something that you need to be paying attention to. If you buy the kit from Speedway, I don't know who else's kits have this issue, but the power valve is wrong. It has this lip on the power valve. This lip right here will leak every single time and your carburetor will run rich. This is the power valve you have to have. So pause the video and look at this part number right here. I'll read it out loud. 910-789904. This power valve does not have the lip on. Okay. So here's the differences. 
that little lip right there, that edge, it will not make a seal and it will leak every single time. So make sure you get the right power valve. So I'm gonna flip this upside down, put a gasket on the power valve. Make sure it's all the way flush. Go ahead and screw the power valve in. Get it nice and snug. And I'm just gonna barely wrench on top of that. Just a little bit snug. All right, so now it's time to bolt the body down to the base. And if you get a generic gasket kit, it's gonna come with multiple different types of gaskets. Uh, make sure you use the right one for your year. So just go through them until the holes up here line up just right.